Hi, my name is Mami Okada. I'm a casting director at Bang Zoom Entertainment and I'm here with Anime Impulse. So I started out at Bang Zoom Entertainment as an intern and I actually didn't know anything about anime at all, period. But I was fascinated about behind the scenes and almost like a filmmaking kind of process. So I started out as a production assistant and I learned everything I can. And along the way, I worked with casting director Kaiko Sakamoto and she taught me everything about, you know, voice over world. So I kind of got in slowly, but it was more of not like I was going towards casting director. It was part of the production process. And how That's how I learned about casting. and. Now I kind of fell in love with it and I really love working on it. So when it comes to anime, it's definitely an uh, important factor to consider what Japanese uh, actors sound like or uh, the tone or the atmosphere, anything, the performance that Japanese actor is creating. Uh, it's very important for English voice actors to kind of be able to portray that in their own way. Uh, so definitely it's a big factor for me when I'm casting on anime, how the English voice is, sounds like compared to Japanese voice. Because what we're trying to achieve is it's almost like the same world. For example, like I'm bilingual and I can watch both ways, but I forget which language I'm watching. That's the kind of feeling we are trying to achieve. So my day at Bang Zoom, uh, it's very hectic. <laughs> Not only casting, but I also supervise mixing as well. And I do touch a lot of that, like studio operations as well. I will be working on multiple casting in one day. Sending out auditions today, and then the rest of the day I might be working on uh, another anime, or reviewing auditions or in auditioning in person in the studio. At the same time, I'm talking to the ne you know, producers about the next project, or wrapping up the casting for one project. So. It's uh, always kind of moving and then there's always multiple shows that I'm touching every day. Uh, I can't name a particular person at the moment, but definitely there are so many moments like that. Sometimes like I've known that particular actor for a long time and then we work together on many projects. But then one day suddenly, you know, this person comes in and does something that I've never heard of before. Like, like wow, where that? come from. <laughs> kind of thing happens all the time. Also like having to audition total strangers like at the stage, like in open audition. Sometimes people say they never done a voice acting but they just like sound like a pro. So yeah, it's it's really fun. Uh, I have never actually worked with Japanese seiyu yet. I hope uh, someday I get to meet them or work with them, but yeah, surprisingly how long I've been doing, I don't think I've actually had the opportunity to work together with Japanese actors. However, I have been to Japanese anime recording studios and I've seen them in action, so they all record in one room and they do their ninja moves to you know, record uh, 15 people at the same time. So I have had the opportunity to watch them do it, but I haven't had a chance to do it together, so hopefully in the future. So in Japan, they record everybody in the same room, but the difference between Japan and America, because America does group recording for regional cartoons, but in Japan, uh, maybe there are 20 people in the room, but they only have a three microphone. So what they do is they go up and down to the microphone. So they say it's more difficult to do that than actually voice act because everybody has a script. You kind of have to see where your lines are coming up and you slowly walk up without making any noise, like slowly turning page and then you say your line and then slowly back away. Uh, there are a microphone for tall person and short person and a medium person. So you kind of like be on standby for that microphone. 
So yeah, it's just like everybody keep moving around. Which, you know, in the America, you get your own microphone, so you don't need to move around. I don't think it's a matter of if you actually got that role or not. Like, if you are confident and you gave everything you had for that audition, it really shouldn't matter in the end what happens. And uh, even like the really famous voice actors, they audition like 30, 40 titles per week for sure, like maybe the minimum. So there are more chances that you don't get the role, but the successful audition is, I think, when you are confident and you own the character, because if you're not sure, no matter how great voice you have, a performance you have, if you're not sure about the character, we will hear it, and then it won't be as good. Only be confident, and once you submit, there shouldn't be anything to, you know, look back and think back. So it shouldn't matter if you get that role or not. And I, I consider that successful. Especially for the, the newer voice actors, I get the auditions a lot that kind of trying to sound cool or sound nice, but I don't actually hear the emotion. Like, why are you saying those words? So I don't really feel the emotion behind it. So I think that's kind of biggest mistake. Like they try to showcase the cool voice you have or the range you have, or you can yell and do all that kind of things. But that's not what we are looking for. We are looking for that emotion behind it. Like why are you saying these words? The, the funny things happen all the time in the studio. Um, it's not about just the work, you know, we are also having fun. So uh, there are way too many fun moments uh, every day, I think. When you really think back and um, kind of look from outside, the things that actually, not the voice actors, but like the directors say, uh, it totally makes sense at the moment. But we say things like, oh, can you slow down the butt? You know, like something like that, you know, like, oh, can you stretch but or something but it totally makes sense when we are recording <laughs> but you know when you listen to it later like it is kind of funny <laughs> so i've worked on many 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 series of anime and uh it's very hard to pick one i have not many i have like top 10 but <laughs> for now i will say the favorite anime that i worked on is a series called Eureka 7. So this is back in like, I think originally released maybe 2005, six, yeah. So it's a little bit older title, but it was my first like serious mech anime that I watched. And then I never thought I like mech anime, but uh, the story is just so deep and so unique and so raw and real. Uh, although there are, you know, those mechs on surfing boards and then we, you know, they fight with the aliens and all that kind of stuff, but the, the characters are so real and then it has a mixture of like adolescent, childhood kind of thing versus adult, you know, mature and then their lives. So it's really combined really well together. So if I have to pick one, Eureka 7 is my favorite anime. Thank you so much for watching this Q&A video. If you'd like to find out more about voiceover or BangZoom or about me, please check out uh, BangZoom Instagram at BangZoom and my Twitter at Maniam and you can check the link here. Thank you.